Thank you for viewing and sharing. Uh, God will continue to reach you and bless you, and continue to minister to you at the point of your need. It's my prayer and hope that uh, whatever you desire in the Lord will be established on your behalf. You see, we're going through a very difficult times, and uh, one thing the scripture encourages us, which I'm just going to share with you today, is that uh, the Bible said that we must what have a sound mind, because the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. And for what lies ahead of us, we need to have a sound mind, because without a sound mind, we are not going to be able to overcome what we see that's in the future. So, so I'm going to quickly read that scripture to strengthen us today, which is reading from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 where Paul was encouraging uh, uh, Timothy to say, look, Timothy, you need to be bold, for God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And for us to be able to move forward into the future, especially with what has just happened around us that has created a lot of fear, anxiety in people, if you're going to have a job, have a family, have a home to stay, have food on their table, it's a whole lot of fear. But one thing that the Bible has encouraged us to do is that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of one love. He loves us so much. And we ought to be able to love one another, love other based on the love of Christ which you have in us. And of sound mind, and I just talk of power, the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. The power to be able to withstand the enemy. The enemy is the devil. The greatest enemy we ever have to fight with in our lifetime is the devil. It's not coronavirus. Coronavirus will come and go. As they tell you, there are millions of viruses all over the earth. But the fact is, the man we constantly wage war against that never ends is Satan himself. Because Satan knows what awaits him which is the final judgment. So he will do everything. So the Bible said God has given us power. And that power is what we inherited from Christ. Remember when he died, he went to the grave, take the key of life from Satan and destroy Satan, dis discomfit him, defeated him straight on. There was no, <laughs> no shortcut. It was a punch out, knock him out completely and took the, le the, the keys of authority of life and gave it to us. And when he left, he gave it to us. He said, you know what? All authorities under me have given it to you. So he gave us power to overcome the devil. Because our greatest enemy, like I said, is not the coronavirus. It's the enemy, which is Satan himself. That constantly put us at war with our creator, with our God, who is our father. Who constantly create an enmity between us and our father. It's just like a child who... You, you, you done everything for, 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 for your child. You, 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 you pay for their school fees, take them to school from child. You nourish this kid. You have a, a brilliant plan and you, 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 you have good vision for your child, like, just like every other parent, to grow up and be a better person. And this person grew up to become, uh, you, you, you pay the school fees up to university level, even as far as they can go, and will turn out to be something that you never wish your child to be, rebellious. How do you feel as a parent? And you, you, sometimes you see a situation where parents disown their own children. They will pull them off the wheel. They no longer have anything to do with them. The child will move on and which the, 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 the English word, they call it the prodigal son. You just go and that's it. Prodigal son, sometimes they never even come back. They disappear into the world. And it happens in every culture, either Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter. That's the same way God feels with us. Every time Satan wants to, you know, we continue constantly create an enmity between us and God our creator and he is our worst enemy and he is the one we need to face but God is telling us is that he's encouraging us that we should not be afraid of anything because God he has not given another spirit of fear because fear is a torment it, it does not bring something good it, it destroy our spirit destroy our mind it destroy our it destroy everything that we have to make sure we never move forward and that's where Satan attack so you say, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. Of power, too, but we can be able to withstand him. When he come around us, we are able to use the word of God, the scripture, to tell him, thus says the Lord. This is what the word of God is. I'd rather believe the word of God than to believe what you are preaching to me. And the Bible talk of love. God has loved us and gave us his only begotten son. And we it's only normal that we also go out and share the love of Christ, which I'm sharing to you, because without him, there is no other way. And the Bible now talk of sound mind. And sound mind, for you to have a sound mind, you need to have a sound faith. 
You cannot have a sound mind outside of a sound faith. Sound faith means you have to trust, you have to believe. Regardless of the circumstances, the situation that you're going through right now, you have to believe. You have to stay strong. You have to know that he that make these promises will never change, will never fail. So when you do that, you begin to have that strong, that strength, believing, trusting, knowing that God, no matter what, the world can fall apart. The world can change. He will never change. The scripture says he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because in him, there is no variableness. In other words, there is no corniness. There is no, there is no corner, corner. There, there is no straight. What he is, is what he is. He cannot change because of your situation, my situation. He become a different God. No. He is who he is. He's Jehovah. El Shaddai. From the beginning to the end, his ways are the same. And that's why the scripture says no man can understand his way. So for us to have our sound mind, we must have a sound faith in him, knowing that he that we're talking about, he that we're preaching about, that he that we pray to, he remains the same. We might not understand his ways, how he does things. That's who he is. But one thing we do know that is that he is faithful in all his ways. So his ways can never be our ways. His, way can, his structure can never be our structure. His mindset can never be our mindset. So all we need to do is to what we need must be able to for, for, for our mind to be sound where we come to that level that nothing shakes us, nothing moves us. We have to have that faith in Him, because you cannot have a sound mind outside of faith. Faith to believe, faith to trust, faith to 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 know that no matter what He will be there for you. That's what constitute a sound mind that's what create a sound mind and when once you have a sound mind you're able to overcome you're able to to know that whatever lies ahead of you has already been overcome why because the the the, the god that you trust we are not just talking the god that is our way generic god who everybody believes no you know that god just say god what, which one are you talking about we're talking of God of the scripture, of the word of God, God of the Bible, written, put together, but not, not, not by the inspiration of, of men, but by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one we know, the God of Israel, who liberated Israel from Egypt and later adopted us, the Gentiles, into the covenant through the blood of Jesus. That's the God we're talking about. Because you can be talking about God. There are so many God out there. It depends on which one you believe. But if you are talking about God of heaven, like I'm talking about now, the one that created the heavens and the earth and all that, no doubt in him and all that, I guarantee that whatever that is ahead of you, he's taking care of it. You don't need to worry. You don't need to be moved. Because before you were created, he already knows that this thing they exist and they are going to happen. And he has already prepared the leeway for you to be able to escape it. Because he said, I will never allow anything to come near you nor destroy you. Because before you were created, I know who you were. I already formed you. Before I formed you, I already know. I've already established you because I know who you are. And the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11, verse 1, it said, having therefore this confidence, we need to, to move forward. We need to move further in faith and trust him. Let me just quickly read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Quickly, uh, and you see Paul here talking here, having therefore this faith, this trust, this belief, we should what? We should therefore have this confidence in walking with him, in him, because in chapter 7, verse 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, uh, here's Paul talking here. He says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all of filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting the holiness in the fear of the Lord. Have we have this faith? Have we have been there for this belief, this trust? Let us cleanse our way, move away from what Satan has been deceiving us to do, making us to defy our God, and walk with him. Come in the appearance of knowing what he likes, what he does not like, and begin to rectify those things and let him take charge. That's literally what Paul is saying. To walk in holiness and righteousness is to forsake the ways of the world, the way we used to do things. You know, uh, there are things the Bible said, in fact, it said the things of the flesh. We know the things of the flesh. The things of the flesh, mainly, if you sum all it up, the, 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 the psalmist Solomon call it vanity. Things that easily distract us from following God, from making us to believe who He is, from making us to follow, to establish our relationship with Him on a constant 
regular basis. Those, th those things that come in between that, you know what I'm talking about, that break us not to be in good alliance with him. Paul said, having therefore knowing this confidence that we have in him, let's put this thing aside and what? Walk with him. So that our faith can be stronger in him. When our faith is stronger in him, our mind becomes a sound mind. In other words, we are not persuaded by what is happening around the world. The Bible says, even with thousand fall on our right and on our left hand side, because he is with us, will we not? Why are they falling on our left and our right hand side? Because he is. His banner is over us. He is in charge over us. So people will be falling on our side and yet we will not fall. The Bible didn't say we will fall. It said they will be falling on our left and they will be falling on our right. So we need to understand that to be able to have a sound mind, for you to be able to overcome what lies ahead after these viruses, after the lockdown and all that, we have to have a sound mind. Without a sound mind, you will not be able to overcome because fear is going to rip you apart. And Satan is going to use fear to try to destroy you. And by using that putty fear in you, you are not able to overcome what lies ahead, the difficult times and all that. I share a dream that I had about just yesterday with you. In this dream, I saw, as I was at the petrol station, suddenly I was trying to fix my car. I don't know what was wrong with it. As I was there, there was another white guy who was busy putting a petrol in his car. Then suddenly, yeah, I'm moving because it was like a queue. So it finished, I expect him to move. Suddenly, he said, no, he's not moving. He need to change two tires. I said, ah, but why are you changing tires now? So I got a little bit uh, not happy about that. So I, I just walk a distance down the road. As I walk a distance down the road, just a stone throw from the station. Meanwhile, my car was there by the station. Then suddenly I saw a certain man from authority. They said they are from the authority. There was a car, a Ford Mustang that was parked there and it was covered in tarpaulin and all that. I said, no, this car has been here, abandoned. We don't know who owns it. Can you have this car? I mean, you can, you, you can take it. I said, oh, really? He said, yes, yeah, you can have it. Go with it. And they just signed the paper and they left. They gave it to me. So as I was there, there was this guy. His name is John. He worked with me in the farm. And he was there, his wife was there also. Suddenly, we they, they were removing the tarpaulin, trying to check the car, see what was wrong and everything. As we opened this car, this car was in beautiful condition. There was nothing wrong with the car. It was almost like brand new and all that. We said, oh, no, let's look for the keys. So myself and John, we began to look for the keys. As we found the keys in the, in the pigeon hole, we took it out, we saw the keys. Oh, now we found the key. So as we opened the other side of the pigeon hole, I saw a whole lot of money, bundles and bundles of money and all that. So as they're scooping the money, in about 200 rents note. I started scooping the money in the bag. As I scoop all the money, because a whole lot of bunch of money. Then after that, we stole, I started the car, we drove the car. I was driving, as I was driving, and suddenly were a multitude of people, a lot of thousands of people. They were walking on the right, on the left. All of us were heading towards the same direction, towards the city center. As we all headed towards the city, the old people, the young people, the old people were walking slowly. Some were driving on the right side, most people were walking on the left side as they were driving motorcycle, bicycle. Everybody was heading towards the same direction. As we went towards the same direction, the road was smooth. Suddenly, the road became bumpy. It became bumpy. As it became bumpy, then it became worse. It started getting worse. I said, oh, my goodness. As we were getting worse, it was getting worse. But one thing that was unique there, suddenly I was driving. In this dream, suddenly I was riding a motorcycle. As I was driving, shaking and everything. And I was still right, maintaining the same speed I was maintaining while I was on the smooth road. So I said, okay, fine. The road may be rough and all that, but I'm, I'm riding. As I was riding, I passed a lot of people. Some car became too slow because the road was so bad. But people were just walking, some with their head hand down, but they were going. They were, they were going. Mama, Papa, everybody was going. But my speed, I was still maintaining on that rough road. I was bumping, everything was going. As I was going rough, suddenly, as we were going, 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 towards the town, after I remember that building home affair, I saw a friend of mine, another pastor friend of mine, Pastor Ernest, I asked him, I, I saw him from behind, I said, no, that's Ernest, I can pick it up, pick him out from the crowd. I said, uh, Ernest, where are you coming from? He said, oh, no, I'm coming from home affair, I went to get a certain document for my trip. I said, oh, good. So I passed him, then suddenly the crowd became bigger, and then the road suddenly became smoother and all that. Now, I was asking the Lord, what is this dream all about? He told me simply, the times ahead is going to be rough. But what you should know is that, like the previous dream that I had, if you have faith and you trust in me, you will see through it. That's the reason the road was started smoothly because there's that hope. We're launching out now after the coronavirus will come with hope. 
that suddenly we're going to realize that the road is not going to be smooth. Things are going to get rough. Things are going to ru get rough. If you, if you listen to my first stream that I had, uh, which I did share on this platform, but I shared it on the other platform, it became rough, became rough, became rough. But after a while, it became smooth again. So it's not going to be a smooth ride after this whole scenario. Things are going to change. Decisions are, will need to be made. Very dr drastic de decisions. So we will have to walk through some rough ride. But what we're going to do in that dream, one I know is that I found myself, I was still maintaining speed. People were still walking through. Only faith will carry us through. Faith will, will help us through. Faith and sound mind. Because when you, when you have faith, you trust, you believe in Him, your mind will be sound. You will not be shaking. Your mind will not be worried over tomorrow. Okay? So, sound mind and faith is what is going to carry us through that journey. So, I, I want us to be encouraged that whatever lies ahead, He is in control. He promised us in His word, I will never let you down, nor abandon you. In times of the crisis ahead of you, I will be with you. But one thing we must do, we must learn to trust Him. We must learn to have faith in Him. We must learn to walk with Him. We must learn to hear His voice. We must learn to get rid of certain things that is in our life we shouldn't be carrying with us. So that He can be able to have His ways in our life as well. Let us not hang on to the things of the past, but let's look into the future and ask him, Lord, what is it that you have you want me to change? What is it that you want me to do? Prepare your mind. Let your mind, because out of your mind are the issues of life. If you don't guide against it, you don't hold on to it strongly and guide it and let it be continually healed and sound in faith, beloved, you are not going to make this journey. For it to happen, for you to make this journey, you must stand strong. You must believe. You must have faith. You must, in what you do, you must learn to trust God. Let His Holy Spirit guide you. Don't just go to church. Don't just talk. Don't just pray in vain. Don't, 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 don't fast for nothing. Whatever you do, let it have a meaning. Let it come out. Because a sound mind, when, you're in this, when your mind is sound, you will be in good health. You will not be sick. Believe you me. When your faith in Him is unshakable in times like where we are going into now, you will not be sick. You will be healthy. The whole world will be falling around you. You will be standing firm. So I want to encourage you to look forward to what lies ahead of you. That there is nothing greater than the God that you serve, the Jehovah El Shaddai. That He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He controls the universe. He created all things. Jehoshaphat was in trouble big one and the bible said he was surrounded by almost about three or four nations of army who were numbered like a sand on the seashore and he got a report and he got frightened fear gripped him but he remembered who his god is he called the nation of judah and jerusalem and said we must all come together let us fast there is a need here our enemy has come to destroy us and when he gathered them together, in that prayer, he reminded the Lord that the temple, you say, whenever we're in, in, in trouble, when we look up to that temple that we build unto you, we cry unto you that you will hear us. He didn't talk too much. He, did, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, he reminded God of the promises at the time that of Solomon dedicating the temple, that when the enemy come against us, you will be there to fight for us. The Bible said they lift up their voice and they shouted and they call upon the name of the Lord. And after they call upon the name of the Lord, the, the scripture said, from there, they worship him. They give him praise. They lift up his voices and praise. And the Bible said God raised a prophet amongst them in that prayer meeting and told them, this battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Beloved, I want you to know that the battle we are into is not ours. It belongs unto the Lord. He will fight on our behalf. He has fought on our behalf. And he will give us testimony in this battle. So we don't need to carry any weapons of war. All we need to do is to talk to him. Is to have a relationship with him. Is to tell him who we are. The relationship we have with him. That is not made of men or goats and bulls. But is made of the blood of his son Jesus. That was written on the covenant for life. He, when you remind him of that. He will turn his anger around. And fight your war. Fight your battle. You need a job? 
talk to him. Your business is flouting, struggling, talk to him. Before you run to your government or you run to the bank, talk to him. There's no food in your house, speak to him. He will tell you what to do. So you don't need to be afraid. You see, we are all involved in warfare every day. Our war is all different. Jehoshaphat has to put up with a war that was physical. Where weapons was involved, destructions of men were involved. That was his war. He has to call on to God and remind him of the covenant they have with him, even through the temple. And the Bible said that God was set and those people set them up against each other. Why these people were singing and dancing? I don't know where you fight war with singing and dancing. But we have seen it in the scripture. These people were singing and dancing unto the Lord. Why these people they were killing one another? That was his challenge. That was his fear. That was his dilemma. But God intervened in his own way. Jehoshaphat's war became the war of the living God. The same thing you want to do. You want to make your war, your trouble, his trouble. You want me to make your war, his war. The challenges you're going through, you want to make it his challenge. Don't make it your challenge. What do you have to do? Come to him as you are. Surrender to him. And let him have his way and see how far he's going to take you. We need to start believing. We need to start working with him. We need to start taking what he said in his word for real. Let him make a change in our life. Fasting and prayer is not good enough, but we must also act upon what we fast and pray. Because when Jehoshaphat called upon the Lord, he believed. And the Bible established, the, the word of God said, and God established, God came through. We saw it with, with, with Joshua in, in, in the wall of Jericho. We all know the story. It's the same God we're dealing with today. And we, they, they, those guys, they came into the covenant of Abraham, as you will remember. But we came into the covenant of Jesus Christ, which is greater, that of Abraham or that of Jesus. You need to know that. I leave that for you to judge. If God with the covenant of man, a man that is as faulty as you and I, of Abraham, can, God can stand for them in times of trouble, bringing their enemies onto their knees before their eyes. How much more you and I that came into a covenant through Christ, the blood of Christ, the Savior of the world. Abraham wasn't the Savior of the world. Abraham was just a man like me, I mean, who had faith in God, and God struck a covenant with him. They had to use the, 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 the killing of goats, rams, and bulls to be able to continue to walk with this covenant. But in our case, it's not so. Jesus, he came as the lamb, as the goat, as the bull, as the doves, as everything, and completed it all which is a greater covenant. So we need to understand the covenant that we are in. I will speak on the covenant much more later, but we need to understand that our covenant is greater than that of Abraham. So as a result, we have a better opportunity than the children of Israel. I know where you're going from here, but don't worry. Go and read your scripture. The covenant we have today, you cannot compare to that of Abraham. So you must come in that faith and have that mind, sound mind, knowing that the Lord is in absolute control of anything and everything that is lying ahead. Beloved, let's not be afraid of what lies ahead, but let's trust him. Let's believe him. Let's have a sound mind. Let's have faith. Let's know that he that is in control of our life, he will carry us through. God bless you. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share. Remember, we're sharing it. This is the time to preach. This is the time to share the gospel. The love of Christ is time to, to let it go. When you finish listening to this program, don't just shut it down. Click share. Share with people. Let people receive. Subscribe. Press that bell so that whenever we release videos like this, you'll be the first to receive it. God bless you and stay blessed. Bye-bye.